Welcome back. All right, so today, career video on Mika Kiprasov, uh, a goaltender who really was stuck behind some, some good goaltending in San Jose. Took him a while to come over and play in North America as well. His career ends up being far shorter than I think it would have been if he'd been drafted by another organization. And here we are. He was drafted 116th overall in 1995 by the San Jose Sharks. He doesn't actually make his debut at the San Jose Sharks until the 2000-2001 season. He plays five games, has a record of 2-0-1 with a 9-0-2 save percentage. Uh, in the playoffs, he does play three games, 1-1 one one record, 9-37 save percentage. So that's where people see Kiprasov's a good goaltender. It's not bad. But for San Jose, San Jose at this point is a goaltending factory. It's one after another, after another, after another. And it just, it felt like there was an endless supply. There wasn't. This is where the narrator comes up. Narrator says there wasn't. So, 2001-2002, he plays 20 games as the backup goaltender. 7-6-3 record, 9-15 save percentage. Good, solid season for a backup. Makes one appearance in the playoffs. No record. Doesn't allow a goal, so he has a perfect save percentage. Things are good. But things get rough in 2002-2003. And this is, I think, what leads to him being traded. 22 games, a record of 5-14, and 14, 879 save percentage. So it's a rough season for Kiprasov. And for the San Jose Sharks, they have some options. So they carry three goaltenders the following season. They carry Evgeny Nabokov. Well, Nabokov's not going anywhere. He's the starter. And they have Vesa Toskala. And Toskala outplayed Kiprasov. So... Kiprasov wasn't happy. He wanted to play. Obviously, he's a goaltender. He wants to play. And the Calgary Flames were like, oh, you want to play? We got some news. Uh, Roman Turk had gotten hurt. Uh, so for Calgary, they needed a goaltender right away. And so they make a trade. They traded a 2005 second round pick in exchange for Mika Kiprasov. Now, what's interesting is normally when a player of this stature gets traded for just a draft pick, that trade is lopsided in favor of the team that gets that player. But... Mark Edward Vlasic was the draft pick in 2005 San Jose took. So I think San Jose is okay with it eventually. And San Jose had good goaltending through most of the time that Kiprasov was in Calgary. So it doesn't end up being as egregious as it would have been if, say, San Jose had been at the bottom of the league and goaltending was killing them. Now, he makes an immediate impression in Calgary. 38 games played in 2003-2004 after the trade. Because that trade is made November 16th. He hasn't played a game yet that year, so he's anxious to go. He ends up with a record of 24-10-4, and 9-33 save percentage, leads the league there. And then in the playoffs, uh, a lot of games. 26 games as the Flames go all the way to the final. He ends up 15-11 and 11 with a 9-28 save percentage. And Kiprasov becomes a legend at that point. That is, that is it. He's a legend in Calgary. Wouldn't have mattered what he did after that. He got them all the way to within one win of a Stanley Cup. Uh, so what does he do for, for an encore? Well, Calgary works him a lot. And this will always be the debate with Kiprasov. So we'll go through it. 0506, he plays 74 games. That's second overall. Pretty sure Marty Bruder was number one. 42 wins. That's also second overall. Uh, 20 regulation losses and 11 losses in overtime or shootouts. That was first overall in the NHL. 923 save percentage is third. In the playoffs, he plays seven games, has a record of 3-4, and 9-21 save percentage. He wins the Vesna, he wins the Jennings Trophy, and he's on the NHL's first team. So, Vesna Trophy, Stanley Cup Final. What else has he got? Well, 6 7 things, things kind of start to get a little bit rough. So, 74 games played, which is third. I believe that's behind Luongo and uh, Bruder that year. 40 wins, which is also third. Believe that's behind both of those guys as well. Uh, 24 losses in regulation, which is seventh, and nine overtime or shootout losses, which is second in the league. His 917 save percentage was ninth. So what's starting to come up here is the discussion of okay, he played him 74 games in back-to-back -back seasons. He he needs more rest. In the playoffs, he goes two and four in six games, 929 save percentage. That is the one year he played in the All-Star game. He only played in one All-Star game. Weird. 2007-2008, uh, he plays 76 games, which again is third in the NHL. Uh, 39 wins, which is third in the NHL. 26 losses in regulation, which is sixth. 10 overtime or shootout losses, which is first in the league. 
906 save percentage. So now we're really having this discussion. His save percentage has gone 933, 923, 917, down to 906. It's a rough year for him, but he's playing every night, right? Uh, seven games in the playoffs, uh, finishes two and four. He was relieved in one of those games, didn't factor into the win. Uh, 908 save percentage in the playoffs. So we're having that discussion with the playoffs as well. And, and the question is, is he being overworked? So 2008, 2009, he plays 76 games again. Uh, first in the NHL in, in uh, games played. 45 wins, which is first. So he leads the league there. 26 losses in regulation, which is sixth. And five overtime or shootout losses. But alarming is the 903 save percentage. He is having issues when it comes to uh, being able to play that many games. He's not saying it. He doesn't have to. You can see it in the numbers. Uh, in the playoffs, he goes 2-4 and four with an 884 save percentage. And little did he know, that was the last time he would see playoffs either. So you can see the numbers are falling apart. So going into the 09-10 season... He decides off-season training is a good idea. He was indifferent towards it. Now, I understand pro athletes seeing off-season training as being optional. Makes sense. Uh, when you're in your 20s, yeah, your body can bounce back really quickly. But now he's getting into his 30s and doesn't bounce back quite as quickly. So the off-season training looks like it works in 09-10. He ends up playing 73 games because a new coach comes in and says, hey, I'm, I'm going to give him more rest. So he only plays 73 games instead of 76. 35 wins, which is 10th, 28 regulation losses, which is 1st, and 10 overtime or shootout losses, which is 3rd third, third overall in the NHL. But the 920 save percentage tells you he's back. That was 10th overall in the NHL, and it was nice to see him bounce back. 2010-2011, though, his struggles show up. 71 games played, which was 3rd overall. Uh, 37 wins, which again, third overall, 24 regulation losses, which is ninth overall, and six overtime or shootout losses, a 906 save percentage. And he gets jeered. He's having a rough, a rough time of it. And he gets jeered when he's having a rough time of it, especially in January of that season. So this is a Flames team now that this is where they're in that, that spot where they're not bad enough to draft in the top five and, and really do a rebuild, but they're not good enough to make the playoffs. And so it's a really rough time for Calgary fans at that stage. 2011-2012, uh, he plays 70 games because they're resting him more, I, I guess, 70 games. Uh, 35 wins, which is 5th overall in the NHL. 22 losses, which is 7th in terms of regulation losses. And 11 overtime or shootout losses, which is actually 4th that year. So a lot of overtime or shootout losses there. But the 921 save percentage was 9th overall. So again, it's a good season for him in the midst of a mediocre season for the Calgary Flames. So 2012-2013, lockout shortened season. He only plays half their games. 24 games played, 8 wins, 14 losses in regulation, which is ninth overall in the NHL, and 2 overtime or shootout losses. His save percentage that year is down to 882. And he let Finland know he wasn't going to be able to play for, the, for them because he was planning to retire, uh, which leaked out before the actual retirement. And also he wouldn't waive his no-trade clause. There was a discussion of whether or not Toronto was trying to pick him up with the idea that they could use him uh, for the 2013 playoffs, either as the backup or maybe as the starter. Maybe that would have been Toronto's plan, but he would not waive his no-trade clause was the rumor at the time. So Kiprasov ends up retiring uh, officially in September of 2013. So before we get into training camp and all that, but he retires as the all-time leader in wins for the Calgary Flames, believe shutouts as well, games played. And he played those games over a very squash period of time. And it's funny because we don't see goaltenders playing that many games. Now we see a goaltender playing 65 games. And we'll say, ah, he probably played too much. He played 76 games in, in two seasons back-to-back. -back. And that was after 74 games in seasons back-to-back. -back. And like I said, a coach comes in and goes, yeah, we got to rest him more. He played 73, 71, and 70 games respectively those following three seasons. He didn't get rested very much. So his 623 games played as 46th among goaltenders all-time. His 319 wins is 31st all-time. His 213 losses is 72nd. Uh, 71 overtime or shootout losses or ties. Uh, he was in the top 100 there, but that's not really a, a stat that we worry too much about. His 912 save percentage is 40th. There should be an asterisk when you're ranking guys by save percentage because different eras have different save percentages. 
Uh, and in the playoffs, he plays 56 games, a record of 25 and 28, 921 save percentage. So he wins 15 games in that run to the Stanley Cup final in 2004. Uh, only 10 playoff wins for him the rest of his career. And the question can be asked of whether or not he might have won Stanley Cup playing somewhere else. Uh, did San Jose make a mistake keeping Nabokov and not giving Kiprasov that shot? We'll never know. But for San Jose, with the sample size they had, they felt comfortable uh, moving on from him and going with a, a battery of Nabokov and Toskala. It worked out well enough for them, but Kiprasov had quite the career, didn't he? So in 2005-2006, when he wins the Vezina, he saves 42 goals above average. That means if you have an average goaltender in, they would have allowed 42 more goals than he did. And so it shows that he was the best goalie in the league that year. It's a nice number to look at. 2010, he wins the Olympic bronze medal. Uh, 1999 and 2001, he wins silver at the World Championships. And 2004, he won silver at the World Cup. So no golds for him, but still some, some hardware and a pretty, pretty solid career all around. So there you go. Mika Kiprasov, a Calgary legend and a goaltender that I, I don't see as having had like a Hall of Fame career, but it's still a pretty solid one. And yeah, there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below regarding Mika Kiprasov. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.